Greetings and welcome. I am Karyon. I can't keep up with the pace. No, the rhythm's gone now. Anyway, let us continue. Hello, welcome back. Hive Swap Friendship, Volume 5, Part 2. Of affection, unwanted or untrue. Yes, previously we became friends with Polypa. And became an associate to murder. How lovely. Just what we needed. Exactly. And now, something that is untrue, eh? Hmm, let's see. Wonder. We wonder. Walking. You sure are doing a lot of it recently. It's good for your health. You should walk more. Walking's good for you. Back on Earth, you never got near this amount of exercise. You're going to be so in shape when this is over. Provided you still have all your limbs attached and your bones uncrushed. Which is a tall ask, honestly. You could probably come up with safer ways to travel. A taxi or some sort of bus system. But you don't have any money and you can't read signs. Also, you are routinely covered in blood and bruises. So, walking it is. Tired as you are, your feet still carry you toward friendship. Towards Zebru Kodak. Ah, oh, he looks fine, gentlemen. Hey, a little tired. Maybe he needs some sleep. Anyway, Zebru. How are you, Zebru? Your stroll takes you into a nice part of town that seems to have larger, more McMansion-style hives. And based on your past experience on Alterni, you're not quite certain that upper-class enclaves equal safety for you, but you might as well explore. You never know where you'll find your next friend. The power of positive thinking must be on your side, because someone emerges out of the shadows of these sprawling suburbs. Hello there. Oh, hello there. I don't believe we've met. I'm sure I would have remembered someone with such unique looks. You don't know where you are, do you? By this point in time, in, in your time on Alterni, you don't know if it's so wise to admit that you're lost and naive to the ways of the world, but you don't know what you could say to try and convince this guy that you've got any kind of street smarts. You nod your head reluctantly, but he actually looks more interested in you after the confirmation then that you're new to the neighborhood. Have you perhaps found someone who likes you for your vulnerability and naivete? That would sure be fantastic luck. It's a good thing that I found you. Not everyone is as respectful of low bloods as I am. Oh, but I shouldn't make assumptions just because you're not much to look at. My bad. I don't mean to be forward, but you're just so interesting. Mind if I ask what your color your blood is? You hesitate. While you're still terrifyingly ignorant of the intricacies of Alternian society, you're starting to feel terrifyingly informed about the role that blood color plays in this world. And you've managed to gather by now that plain old human red isn't considered one of the better colors to have. It actually kind of is. It's not the same red though. That's red. Our blood is crimson. What do you do? I feel like he's too smart. I feel like he's too smart. He'll... He'll... He'll know. Tell the truth. Let's be honest. I like to tell the truth. It's fine. It's much easier that way. Red, huh? Wow. That's so unique. I've always liked the color red. I don't think I've ever filled a quadrant with a red blood before. I mean, ah. Uh, I don't think I've ever made friends with a red blood before. You don't know where Quadrant is, or what it means to fill one. Given your experience on this plan so far, you're nervous they could mean something violent. But you don't want to further expose your ignorance, so you just say that you're as excited for this friendship as he is. Ha! You come on strong! Nice! You need a place to stay for the day, right? I can help you with that. I've got plenty of spare rooms for guests in my hive. Oh, I bet the word guests has to be in quotation marks, right? Ah, oh, hidden invisible quotation marks. God damn it. You know, because I believe it's important to help out the underser underserved members of the community when you can. What? My hive is this way. Shall we? You follow him down the street. You guess it must qualify as a nice night because you see lots of other trolls walking around here too. Most of them are dressed as nice as Zebro and you see a few shabby looking trolls that must be low bloods walking with high bloods. Today is actually flushed affirmation day, 
so you see a lot of trolls taking their mate spirits out to celebrate. Lucky for you, my flushed quadrant is currently empty, so I'm all yours tonight. That sounds a little weird, ah, no shit. He doesn't need to go be all yours, you assure him. You're an easygoing individual who's happy to share their friends with plenty of other friends. Sure, sure. Sharing can be a good time, if you're into that. Oh god, this is a kinky sex thing, isn't it? Fucking hell, it's a sex dungeon. God damn it. I could be, speaking personally, like maybe with two low bloods, but not in an objectifying way. Everyone in the world has to be respect each other, you know? Wow, what? You have no idea how your innocent comment about friendship got taken to this particular place. Look. That was so easy, I, even I did it. You decided maybe the best thing to say here is nothing. Because who knows how he might misinterpret you next. Huh. Looks like there are a lot of high blood, low blood couples out tonight for the holiday. Pretty unusual to see in this neighborhood, to be honest. It's sad that most of these low bloods are probably with their mate spirits because it's socially advantageous. Pretty shitty of the neighbor high bloods take advantage of that. But not everyone is as socially conscious as I am. I think it's super terrible when high bloods don't treat their low blood mate spirits like the queens that they are. You look around at all the other couples. The class divide is pretty noticeable and some of the high blood trolls have scornful looks on their faces when talking to their low blood dates. One troll dressed in cerulean is making her shabbily dressed mate spirit kneel down so he can give her a ride on his shoulders. It could maybe be a cute coupley thing, you guess. Except she's sure laughing a lot has the heel of her boot pressing into the back of his neck. You don't want to speak about what people might be into, but it does seem kind of humiliating. Zebra sees where you're looking and shudders theatrically. In the process of waving his arms around in disgust, he slips an arm over your shoulder. Oh, <laughs> smooth fucking operative. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you shouldn't have to see something like that. You're trying to think of a tactful and friendly way to move away from his arm around your shoulders when you arrive at what must be his hive. It's the biggest and most McMansion-y hive on the block. And when he stops in front of it, he lets go of you to gesture proudly at his sprawling home. Welcome to my <laughs> humble abode. I just feel grateful, you know, to be able to share my wealth with those less fortunate it's a zebra, oh, for fuck's sake, zebu and zebra, god damn it. When you walk inside the front door, you're greeted by a very distinguished looking white zebra. It has normal zebra markings all over its body, except for around its neck, where the dark grey zags have formed a shape that looks like a bow tie, almost like it's wearing a suit. You don't know how its zebra face is managing to radiate pure disdain when it looks at you, but that is unquestionably the energy you're getting. Yeah, I can see that. That's disdainful. Ah, don't mind my Lucis. He's kind of socially old-fashioned. But he lets me keep low bloods around the hive to help out and stuff. So he's not all bad. Let me give you the grand tour. As Zebru takes you through the spacious hive, you can see other trolls in several of the rooms. Most of them aren't wearing clothes as nice zebras. You're guessing these are the low bloods he just mentioned? They seem to all be doing chores. Sweeping, cooking, exchanging green slime in troll-sized bathtubs for other, possibly fresher green slime. Each of them glances up at you and Zebru when you pass by, then looks deferentially away. The Zebra loses is following you, and every time you exit the room, it pauses in the doorway to whinny out what could be orders, or possibly he's just berating them. You arrive at an empty ballroom-looking space upstairs, where several low blood trolls are hard at work cleaning up the remains of what must have been quite a party. Right. Zibru seems to notice you noticing how all the trolls in here are scrubbing the floor and how they are all avoiding your eyes. See, I told you I take in plenty of guests. I believe it's important to promote diversity, you know? So that's why you don't see the other indigo bloods here. Looks like all the guests are busy today. An important part of com living involves contributing a lot of labor when it's necessary. Right, guys? A few lowbloods mutter an affirmation, while others just put their sponges and mops down to prostrate their whole bodies on the floor. Zebra looks a little uncomfortable with the bowing. 
but not that uncomfortable. He doesn't introduce you to any of them. Ah, uh, they don't all realize yet that my hive is a sanctuary from the harsh injustices of the outside world. Oh, that's how he justifies it. Okay, that's how it is. I protect them from the world outside. In the case of Alternia, with like roving drones that just kind of annihilate people, there's more merit to him doing that than like uh, cult leaders in the real world. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's not as bad. It's still not great, but you know, the conditions of this world make it uh, at least somewhat justifiable as opposed to not at all. <laughs> anyway, enough about my low blood guests. Let's take care of you, shall we? Perhaps as Lucius has had enough of tolerating your presence, because it takes you the opportunity to stop following you and go have more of Zebra's guests. There we go, there's the actual quotation marks. I knew they existed. Now, for better or worse, you are alone, and Zebra has turned all of his attention on you. His smile seems very friendly. You want to see it as friendly. The night is still young. I'm happy to do whatever you want to do. If you feel like going out on the town to celebrate Flushed Affirmation Day, I have lots of other friends I could introduce you to, help you meet the right kind of culture, you know. Or if you're tired, I can show you to your guest room now and we can have a nice night in. Mmm, go out or stay in? Ah jeez, both could go very very poorly. Mmm, mmm, go into the dungeon? Or get killed outside? Fuck, I'm not feeling either of these options. <laughs> My instincts are telling me I need a third one. <laughs> uh, let's go out. Let's go out to the town, right? Why not? Maybe? Ah, uh, okay. You're not crazy about the idea of being alone with this guy for the rest of the night. Plus, if he's as popular as he says he is, that means more potential friends for you to meet. You tell him that you're interested in going out. Cool, cool. That sounds like a great time. I'll just go get ready. Actually, I think I'm more in the mood for a nice quiet night in. Maybe television streaming service and lower the temperature, if that's cool with you. Uh, boy. If that has the same connotations as it does on Earth, it's not cool with you. Oh, Alright, Netflix and chill, that's what it is. <laughs> God damn it, take me a second. You stumble through expressing some misgivings, but he talks over you. Great, sounds like we both feel like staying in tonight. I'm not gonna lie, I'm psyched to stay and have you all to myself. I just want you to feel comfortable whatever we choose to do. Or whatever we choose to do, yeah, choose. <laughs> Uh, you're not sure why he asked what you wanted to do, since your preferences don't seem to matter much. My Lucis and my guests have probably prepared a delicious meal for you by now, but let's finish the tour first. I assume you want to see my room? Uh, you tell him, sure. Bedrooms are a great way for people to express their personalities, and as his friend, you're interested in getting to know him better. He doesn't seem to have heard part of that sentence, but it's okay. Hopefully he got the gist. When you get to his enormous room, it's decorated with posters of musicians on the wall and what seem to be social justice slogans. One poster has a symbol with clawed hands in several different colors coming together to hold a trident with the word unity underneath it. Another poster features a rainbow of colors ranging from rust to olive green that proclaims him to be a low blood ally. Ah, oh, he's one of these fuckers, even. God damn it. Even. <laughs> Two other low blood servants are in here. <laughs> we stop we stopped calling them guests. <laughs> One of them standing on a stepladder to dust some high shells while the other crawls around on the floor, scrubbing and picking up wrappers that Sigbro seems to have just littered there. Pretty sweet place, right? You look confused by the posters. Your music taste probably isn't refined enough to have heard of my favorite bands. I only listen to subversive musicians that speak truth to power. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Sure, sure, pal. Fucking speak to the power. You, you and your mega mansion with like however many slaves you got. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh. Luckily, you have me to teach you how to confront your privilege and support marginalized artists. Also, did you notice my red pile? It's a perfect setup for feeling jams with your morale. Uh, he winks at you. You don't know what a morale is or what he means by feeling jam, which sounds like in theory could be a nice thing, uh, but maybe not, given the sleazy way he says it in. Uh, you tell him that it looks like a very nice pile of things. You spot a couple of pillows, or it looks like a puppet with a disturbingly long nose. That's not a nose. Some random bow ties, a few horseshoes. You look intrigued. While I down on it for a second, we don't have to do anything, but sometimes it can be nice to just, you know, pacify each other a little bit. I mean, hugs are nice. He sprawls on the pile in what he probably thinks is an enticing way, like he wants you to draw him like one of your French girls. He turns away to try and hide the disturbed expression on your face, because turning down his advance this is probably isn't the best way to secure his friendship or survival. As your eyes cast about the rest of the room, you notice that the low blood servant scrubbing the floor is having a coughing fit. You can tell that she is trying to cough unobtrusively, but it seems like she's hacking her lungs up, with each big cough wrecking her whole body and making her shoulders shake. Concerned you crouch down by her side. Uh oh, big mistake. She jumps when she notices your concern and mumbles that she's fine and that you don't need to worry. But she doesn't look fine. Now that you're getting a closer look, you can tell that she seems to be underfed and exhausted, with sickly shadows on her face and scraped up knees and elbows. She looks bad, and you know bad, considering how much of your time you've recently spent stumbling around with various excruciating injuries. You mentioned to Zebra that this his guest is not looking so good. He frowns, getting up from his pile of stuff to come investigate, blinking down at it you in confusion and not sparing a glance for the low blood. What? What are you even talking about? And the servant tries to go back to her scrubbing, but she struggles with coughing and scrubbing simultaneously. It's hard for you to watch. Surely she would feel better if she took a break and ate or drank something. You ask Zebra about that hot meal he said was being cooked for you. Maybe you could give some of it to this poor sick troll? Ah. Uh... Jeez, you're making me look bad. <laughs> There's no way a guest in my house could be going hungry. I respect lowbloods and do everything in my power to take care of them. Mm -hmm. What? You think you're a better ally than I am? A fucking ally. Uh, considering your status or lack thereof on this mode, you're not sure you count as an ally so much as a member of the oppressed underclass. Uh, but you let that slide. You hasten to explain that you didn't mean to criticize him and you're sure he's doing a fine job of being an ally to low bloods. Sure. Yeah, well, it's not easy. Whatever. Maybe we should go eat now. I don't feel like having feelings jam anymore. He turns and leaves the room without showing any sign that he'll do something for the sick low blood. You mouth an apology to her behind his back, and she just gives you a tired wave and goes back to scrubbing. Zebra leads you downstairs to the dining room. Also, I take back what I said about him being better than couple leaders on Earth. He's just as bad, if not worse. He's literally killing his people. He's literally killing... They're not even cultists anymore. No, this is different. This is not, this is not a cult. This is literally just a slave, a slave owner. <laughs> He's just a straight-up slave owner. <laughs> <laughs> With a pretense of being a fucking ally or bullshit like that. God damn, this guy's a piece of shit. Zebra leads you downstairs to the dining room, where his Lucis is supervising a team of lowbloods sitting at the table with what looks like a four-course meal, which they can't have. The look on the Lucis' zebra face is now even more disdainful than before, and its bow tie seems angrier. Also, he said a quadrant has been emptied recently, so as in aka, one of his slaves died. Looks like dinner is almost ready. Cool. Cool. 
Of course, you're probably not going to offer to pay for any of it, are you? Figures, there we go, debt. Lowbloods, I mean, trolls in general are always expecting me to provide for them without even offering any conscupine concupiscence in return. Uh, for once, you're kind of glad that you're unfamiliar with his alien vocabulary and innuendo. You have absolutely no money, which he definitely knows. You can pay him back for the dinner in friendship or slavery. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if I want to be friends with someone who has a problem with the way I do activism. I have it on good authority from every other high blood I know that my inter intersectional praxis is valid. Oh yeah, every other high blood. <laughs> that, that's, that's solely not an echo chamber. You stumble over your words in your haste to assure him that you in no way meant to say he's not valid. You've never met a troll so valid. No one believes in his validity more than you do. Whatever, let's just eat. You both sit down at the table while the lowbloods set the table, light the candles, and serve the appetizer course. You can't help but notice that most of them look just as malnourished and sickly as the troll upstairs, but it might be best not to bring that up again. You eat in silence for a while, and Zebra looks like he's stewing over something. Then he sets his fork down and looks over the table at you with a frown. You know what? I just realized. You totally denied my lowblood her own agency when you questioned me about not feeding her. <laughs> oh, that's how he's just like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, he's word salad. <laughs> uh, denied her agency. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, what you said was totally problematic. You don't respect lowbloods at all, do you? Not like I do. <laughs> yeah, see, internal logic it. Always got internally logic yourself to be the good guy. <laughs> like, you try to apologize, saying that it was not your intention to disrespect anyone, but you're, that you're sorry you apparently did. He doesn't let you get the words out. People don't realize how tough it is to be a high blood troll who believes in social justice. Seriously, I face my own kind of oppression for speaking out being an activist for low blood rights. Sure you do. <laughs> For one thing, I never get the conciliation or concupiscence I deserve. My quarrels are always going unfilled because no one else agrees with my radical views. I thought you'd be different, but you don't get it either. Uh, you try to tell him that he's got you all wrong. You agree with his radical views and believe in low blood rights, which is why you were concerned for his guest in the first place. But he acts like you didn't say any of what you just said. Of course not. Of course not. He doesn't exist in the same world as you do. <laughs> he's like... You're just another one of the oppressors, complicit in the unequal power structures of our fucked up society. Your lack of awareness of your own privilege really makes me sick. What privilege? Lowbloods don't have any privilege, mate. You must think you're so oppressed with your red blood and multiple injuries. <laughs> this is the angle he's taking. Really? <laughs> mate, your problems are not as bad as you know, people who are literally slaves, who you have enslaved. Like... They're worse off than you are, mate. But what you're doing now, rejecting me and criticizing me, it's really exactly the same as what subjugators, subjugators do to the lowbloods they cull. You probably deserve whatever shitty position you have in society, unlike me. I deserve to have this nice house and lowblood servants and full pardons for being such a good actress, okay? God, this guy could not be a bigger parody. Oh this type of person I don't know. he's standing up by now advancing on you with his zebra stamping its hooves threateningly at his side you scramble back trying to make your way to the front door it's tricky because you have to step around all the lowbloods who seem to feel strongly that they should get away from zebra when he's angry you don't make it to the front door fast enough on your own with a terrifying equine scream zebra loses hairs upon its hide legs and strikes you with its hooves battering you through the front door and breaking some of your recently healed ribs again. Take your privilege and offensive views and get out! Anyone who does respect Lowbloods is not welcome as a guest in my hive! Sure, game over. It would be who you'd stay by. This is probably the best outcome. We did not get enslaved. But okay. Let's see what the other option was. Let's go to his house. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's tell the truth. I guess. Let's see what this leads. And then... Show me to my room, please. 
Let's see how this sends. This might be the uh, wrong thing at all. Maybe. Although, given how he be, I don't fucking know. You think that going out with Zebra on flushed off a mission, they might potentially give him the wrong idea. And besides, you're pretty tired, so you don't feel like going out. You tell him you're ready to retire to your guest room now. Sure, sure. Oh, bro. By the way, have you heard of Chixi Roimer? You probably haven't. You don't seem like you're a very serious music fan. <laughs> But you've got a great opportunity tonight to learn from me. One of her low blood musician friends is playing a show for the whole day, and I can guess and because I'm super connected in the scene. We should just go in case she's there. <laughs> okay, yeah. He doesn't respect your low blood at all. Does the exact opposite of what I suggested. See? <laughs> you could have sworn you told him you wanted to stay in tonight, but okay. You can gather the remains of your energy and go out for to this concert with him. That's what a good friend would do. He takes you across town to the concert. Oh yeah, my gut instinct was right. Neither of those options felt right, because they were both a lie. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, only trying to hold your hand or put his arm around you a couple of times on the way. So it could be worse. Maybe hand-holding is totally platonic on Alternia? You hope so. The concert itself is one troll with a guitar and a harmonica who, according to Zebra, is a low blood whose songs are spring truly a radical message. Almost as radical as Chixie's. Uh, almost, almost as radical as the high bloods. <laughs> but not quite. You enjoy the tunes as much as you can, but you don't understand what the lyrics are trying to say. You ask Zebra what the lyrics mean, since the message is apparently important to him, but he gets annoyed with your question. Uh, what? The lyrics are about, um, well... They're about a lot of things. Social justice and oppression and stuff. Yeah, he's completely faking it. It's hard to explain to someone who doesn't already get it. Like, if you're not on my level already, I don't know what I can really say, you know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's why teachers have to be on the same <laughs> education level as like the 10 year olds they're teaching. <laughs> but enough about the music. I want to talk about you. What sort of things are you into? <laughs> uh, true crime and uh, war crimes. <laughs> you haven't had many opportunities on Alternia to talk about your interests. How exciting! You said that you like playing games. Sure, I guess I do that, but he's already interrupting you. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. Cool, cool, sounds great. Really interesting stuff. But what's your quadrant situation like? I don't know what that is. Uh, it's harder to pretend that you know what he's talking about now that he's asked you about quadrants directly. Uh, you admit that you have no idea what he means by quadrant situation. Wow, you're even more clueless than I thought. Don't worry, I still find you attractive. He goes into a brief, but not really brief ex enough, explanation of the four types of romance on Alternia. Matespritship, the flushed quadrant. Which to you sound the most analogous to human romantic partnerships? Moralogens, the pale quadrant, which sounds like an exceptionally codependent friendship by human standards. Auspitism, the ashen quadrant, which you don't understand at all. And Kismasistitude, the black quadrant, which just sounds like repeatedly hooking up with someone you hate. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, got it, I guess, but not really. You're fuzzy on the details of all four of these, but you understand enough to get that he's asking if you're single. You tell him that you uh, really just want to be friends. <laughs> of course, I super respect your choice. If you ever change your mind, I'm right here. And being in a quadrant with an influential, yet sensitive and socially aware, indigable like blood like myself could make it a lot easier for you to survive and thrive in Alternia. Wasn't he criticizing that kind of high blood, low blood, socially advantageous relationship just a few hours ago? It wouldn't be very friendly of you to point out his hypocrisy, so you don't mention it. Yeah, he's a fucking, fucking horrible piece of shit, this guy, goddammit. He's like literally the worst one so far. Like, I think I actually hate this guy. No, not I think. I do hate this guy. Fuck this guy. Fuck Zebra. He's awful. He's a piece of fucking filth. 
After another song, and that troll at the club sidles up to Zebra and whispers something in his ear, then skulks off again. Zebra looks alarmed, glancing around him edging toward the club exit. I just got tipped that there's about to be a culling at this concert. We should get out of here. Oh dear, we don't want that. You definitely agree with him about wanting to get out of here. You look around at the rest of the audience still enjoying the show. You and Zebra are the only ones getting ready to leave. Eh? Is he going to warn any of the other trolls here of the danger? Why would he? He only cares about himself and how he looks. Oh no, definitely not. If I were to warn any of these lowbloods that calling is coming, that could mean risking my life too. There it is, see? Not that I've ever tried, but everyone knows that. The high bloods here will probably be fine though. We've got each other's backs. <laughs> it's important to look after your comrades in the struggle. Yeah. Fuck you, Zebru. Sure enough, you can see that the other trolls here who, much like Zebra, stand out because they're wearing very nice clothes, are casually but urgently leaving the concert venue. The lowbloods are all still clapping and singing along with the singer on stage. No one has given them a tip off. Come on, we've got to scram. Fuck you, you've got blood on your hands, but so do all the high bloods, don't they? But this guy's like that, I can't. Fuck. The two of you absconded, getting away from the music club as fast as your legs can carry you. By the time Zebra decides it's safe to slow down, you are tired and out of breath. Looking around, seems like you've arrived back in the high blood part of town. You wonder if drones have descended on all those trolls at the club by now, and you just can't hear it because this neighborhood is too far away, closed off and sheltered from the violets. Phew, that was a close one. Going to low blood cultural events like that can be dangerous, but it's one of the risks that you have to take if you want to be an activist. And what did your activism accomplish here? <laughs> Nothing. It just It's self-serving. It's just making boosting your own fucking ego. Fuck this guy. He's the worst of them all. I can't tell you how many times I've risked the calling to fight for low blood rights. Civil disobedience is the only way to fight the authoritarian state. <laughs> what, what was disobedient about any of that? God, this guy's such a piece of shit. Wow. Wow. Fuck this guy. He turns to you and takes one of your hands in both of his, looking deep into your eyes. I just think it's so cool how you supported me back there when we risked our lives for the cause. <laughs> That's probably the best way you can contribute as an activist and ally, you know, by supporting me. And speaking of activism, we were talking about quadrants earlier. Let's get back to that. And this guy just does not want to take a no for an answer. Once again, you reiterate that friendship is what you're looking for here. He knows enthusiastically and squeezes your hand tighter. Fuck yeah, I love friendship. I've always believed that a strong friendship is the best foundation for any successful romantic relationship. And many trolls start by being friends first and enter into a quadrant later. Even if you try to be friends but then fight too much, that can still prepare you for a caliginous quadrant. Either way, the thought of being your friend makes my blood push a beat a little faster. Uh, sure, you say. If what we're doing is extolling the benefits of friendship, then boy do you have some things to add to his list. For instance, friendship can give you a sense of platonic companionship with your fellow man, and friends can also come in handy when you need someone to help you move or take you to the airport or other non-romantic activities. You think friendship is a great thing to pursue for its own merits. Friendship is so great that you, once you have it, why would you want anything more? Hell yeah, totally! You're so right that friendship is a great first step. Did you enjoy the concert tonight? Did it persuade you to be an ally for low bloody rights? Ah, uh, you think that by going by your blood color and how often you have almost gotten killed by those more powerful on this planet, you are more like a member of the oppressed underclass than you are an ally. Uh, but you decide not to split hairs and just tell him that, yes, you'll be an ally to yourself. I mean, that's technically good. That's fantastic, I'm so happy to hear that. If you're really an ally to Lobelds, then I'll allow you to be my mate spirit. Friend, you correct him. You can be his friend. Right, sure, yep, I meant to say friend. He lets go of your hand finally, which at least counts for a partial victory, and winks. Yeah, no, this is, uh... Get away from this fucking bastard. This is not a victory at all. There is no victory condition here.
No, getting kicked away by this guy is the victory. That was the true victory. Good God. Fuck this guy. This is my fucking God. This is... <laughs> Alright, the other characters are have questionable moralities. Some of them. Some more than others. But this guy is just straight up. This is unequivocally... Fuck Zebru. He's awful. Evil. Domosos, don't be like him ever. There's no redeeming qualities for this guy. None whatsoever. He's a piece of shit. He's absolutely horrible. Horrible. The worst person that, like, PestaQuest didn't have anyone as deplorable as this fucker. Like, not even close. Not even close. Because this guy fakes it. He's... Oh, God damn, I need to stop. Anyway, bye before I go mad. Goodbye.